Hello everyone, I'm Pearl Jean Mabe and I would like to welcome everyone to today's webinar. Webinars are brought to you as a membership benefit of Heritage Ohio. Heritage Ohio's mission is to help people save the places that matter, build community, live better. Today we will have a presentation on using utility project funding to improve more than just the pipes. We'll be taking questions at the end of the presentation. If you have a question, please type it into the question box at any time throughout the presentation, and we will get to it at the end. Most issues with the webinar software will be solved if you close the program and restart it with the link that was sent to you. Our presenter today is Roger Loomis, the, the Water Administrator for the City of Newark Division of Water and Wastewater. He has a total of 41 years of experience at various water and wastewater facilities working in all facets of the water and wastewater utility business. He has a BS in Business Administrations, Human Resources from The Ohio State University, and an AAS turf in Turfgrass Management from Agricultural Technical Institute of Worcester, a Class 3 Water Supply Certification, and Class 4 Wastewater Treatment Certification. That's a lot. <laughs> With that, I will hand, that, I'll hand this over to Roger. Take it away. All right, thank you. Um, kind of the story I'm going to give today is, is how uh, the city of Newark was able to uh, uh, leverage utility dollars um, spent on separating sewers and and turn that into a uh, downtown revitalization project. And really, uh, what this story kind of comes at it from kind of two different directions, and how we kind of coming up, how we kind of brought that all together. Um, and achieved a, uh, or, or kind of two groups achieved the same goal in the end. So, uh, and it kind of, and, it, and the story kind of started out uh, um, with with these two groups, the city business leaders and and some of the administration of the city, uh, wanting to improve the downtown, uh, and and us as utility managers having to deal with uh, a combined sewer overflows and a long term control plan to uh, separate our sewers uh, as mandated by the EPA. Um, so we were being pushed by uh, by EPA to to uh, meet their regulations, um, but really the key then was the business leaders in town and some of the administration uh, really wanted to improve the downtown, and and so some of the more influential members of the business community uh, were really pushing for this and um, to see these improvements, and they were also spending some of their own money uh, to 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 uh, start doing some of the improvements. Um, so just a little bit of background on. On the utility side of the of the uh, um, story, um, back in in 2012, we were we were, we had already started our long-term control plan. Um, we were doing some work in various parts of the city that EPA had had identified, and but we knew we had to do more. And um, and we still were the way the city had approached that was we were going through instead of going a consent order. Uh, from EPA, we were going on a compliance schedule through our, our permit system with EPA. And so we were kind of picking our own pro projects and kind of working our way through this this uh, process of um, eliminating these combined sewer overflows. If, if you don't know what that is, I guess if you're not in, in the utility business, that means storm sewers and sanitary sewers are combined together. And during rain events, we would have these, these pipes would get full, they would overflow into the river. And so there's an EPA mandate to separate those so we no longer have those overflows. Uh, that's kind of a simple explanation of that, but that's where we were at, where a lot of cities are at in in, in Ohio, uh, at least most of the major cities. Um, so um, we're sitting here looking at EPA compliance and that, and now we're hearing this uh, this goal of of redoing the downtown. We weren't really looking at the downtown exactly. We knew that was an area we had to take care of for a number of reasons, which I'll talk about later. But but it did when we started looking at it. That, that the downtown is an area that we're High impervious area, so a lot of runoff, a lot of water getting into the into the system, and so it was an area really where we get the most bang for our buck. So we were willing to to start that project and start looking into this project in downtown because of of that as part of our overall plan. Um, but we were we weren't really ready to do this project when the city business leaders were coming together and saying, "Hey, we got to do this," um, and so we had to kind of get caught up in into the into the uh, the planning process. Another odd thing about this whole um, project is, if you look at the, uh, sorry, I didn't advance the slide. If you look at the uh, uh, the downtown area, this is kind of a uh, like a cartoon drawing of what, what sewer lines we were going to put in. This is really in the middle of a sewer shed. 
and not something you really like to do on an engineering wise. You're kind of doing things in the middle. Uh, you really should be starting at one end, going through and, and doing uh, as you go upstream in a sewer, right? This is in the middle. Uh, so a little bit difficult for us, um, but 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 it's where where the work needed to get done. So uh, we, we, we embarked on the process. One thing is to keep in mind too, and and what we have done in the city of Newark is we've tried to do uh, integrated projects. We, we've really strived hard, working with our engineering department, working with the Columbia Gas Company, which is the, the two gas companies that are here in town. When we're going to do projects, we let's look at all the things that need to get done in that, those areas: water lines, sewer lines, storm lines, gas lines, street paving, all that stuff. We, we've we've kind of made it a goal within our area, the utility area, to kind of do what we know as know integrated projects. So in this project really is an, an ideal integrated project. I mean, we had to do everything, right? So another factor in this whole thing was the existing condition uh, in, in the downtown area. Downtown, of course, is the oldest part of the city. Uh, we've we had a number of sewer collapses. Here's a picture. Uh, everybody likes to see these, these old brick sewers falling apart, uh, uh, at least looking at them. You don't like to see them when you have to work on them. Uh, but the infrastructure was failing. Uh, so that really was another factor in this whole thing of us moving this forward, moving this up the list is to get work done. Not only do we want to improve the downtown, but you can't really improve it if you got pipes falling apart. And when pipes fall apart, you know, that really is a really a negative impact on the downtown. You get big holes in the ground. You know, you, you've all seen the, you know, the, the stuff in downtown Columbus a number of years ago with the car in the hole, you know, and that kind of stuff. You, you don't want to see that. Uh, and so that was another big factor. And so we had these major issues facing us as well uh, of, of trying to um, uh, fix the uh, sewer system. Another thing that really played into the uh, project, an important role in how, the, how big the project became was it, it's a, compl a complex project. Um, you know, very deep sewers. We, we were 20 feet deep. These are, four, you know, four, over four foot uh, in diameter pipes. These are big pipes. Um, we couldn't reuse the system because it was old and deteriorating, so we had to add a sewer, a storm system to the sanitary system, um, and so that added to the complexity of it. Also, a lot, this is the old downtown area, there are a lot of pipes, there was wires, there's electricity, there's all kinds of stuff running around, a lot of interferences with utilities, um, and then uh, maintaining continuous service. These are businesses we had to maintain, too, so that was, that was really important. Um, and, and but, but made the project a lot more complex. And then on top of that, you had vehicular and pedestrian traffic that we had to maintain because these are businesses. This is the, this is the courthouse. There's, you know, that kind of stuff going on that, that you really just can't, you know, shut down. And so it was really important, made it very complex, but it also in the end made it um, better for us to be able to uh, spend the money be, uh, because, because of how large and complex the project became. Um, <clears throat> so just a little bit about how we got here on the on the uh, this is a little bit of history of of how we got here on the streetscaping side. Um, but the, as I understand, back in the early two two thousands, uh, there was a there was this group that was commissioned. How do we change the traffic in the downtown from one way to two way? Uh, the key issues were, as you see listed there, you know, pedestrian safety, vehicle pedestrian vehicle safety. Uh, the street network was very confusing. We heard that so much from people that, boy, this is really, really confusing down here. How do we, um, you know, we can't, uh, um, we had lights, you know, nobody stopped that, that kind of stuff. Uh, but, but also then keeping parking availability, uh, inadequate signage to find your way around, and then just the general overall economic vitality of the downtown was a problem and what they were looking into. So over 10 years of looking into this, um, one of the interesting things was that the traffic signals downtown uh, were were um, funded by a federal grant and they couldn't be removed without paying that money back. And so uh, that delayed some things early on, not in our project, but projects before. And so once that was released, then that um, gave us a way to, to uh, change some of the, uh, the, the uh, way things uh, were designed downtown. So, uh, so a long, long history of people wanting things to happen on the streetscaping side uh, and improvement side, uh, and also some some failure of our infrastructure. So, kind of these two paths that we're on, uh, and it, and at some point in time, we're, we're all going to kind of meet. At this point in time, around 2012, uh, you know, administration came in, Mayor Hall came in, we started working as a 
kind of we got, got this team together and we said, hey, how how can we do this? And um, and and that that's kind of how the project started. Another another factor in that whole process was they had come up with this uh, group, the Community Improvement Corporation. Uh, the community improvement had had done some work on streetscaping, and they've hired they hired uh, the firm of OHM to come in and assist with some general input on the public. How do we how do they what do they want that to, to look like? Um, um, but of course, the key being that you know we couldn't do any of this stuff uh, unless we improve improve the infrastructure. Um, so the project started moving forward. Um, and with these meetings, uh, and it's kind of interesting when you look down through. These are the goals from those meetings, and, and it looks, you know, we've in, in the end, as we look at at the end, it looks like we've met most of those goals. We don't have free Wi-Fi downtown, um, uh, but uh, and and we're in the process of doing some bearing power lines and, and enhancing alleys. But um, of the things that people wanted, we we did uh, uh, seem to uh, meet most of those goals. You know, when, looking back at the at the beginning, so. Um, So on the overall uh, goals of the project, it kind of kind of comes down to two goals, um, and and really reflects both kind of groups from the utility side and from the, from the uh, business side. Uh, we wanted to improve infrastructure, and improving infrastructure means we needed to reduce the impact that the combined sewers were having on the river, and and then we wanted to improve the quality of life, uh, and that was to try to spur that de development in downtown and make that make the downtown an economic dr driver to the city. So the kind of the two goals that we had, you know, we wanted this vibrant city center, we wanted to improve the image of the city, uh, but at the same time, we wanted to improve the infrastructure. And, 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 and then hopefully, bring that all together, we end up with cleaner rivers, which then, of course, with, with an improved downtown and, and, and a little bit more economic development, we have um, an overall then better quality of life. Um, and so, so that was kind of the general goal going into this here. Uh, we can kind of talk about some of the stormwater goals of, of how much stormwater we're trying to capture, but we'll talk about that maybe here down a couple slides from here. But that was a goal as well. But uh, those were the two overall goals of the project. So, so we started in the project, um, and sure enough, like everything else, you know, how are we going to pay for all this? That, that becomes the comes the real question. Um, we all we all got these great goals, but how we're going to get it done? On this on the uh, water and wastewater side and the stormwater side, it's a pretty easy deal for us uh, to to figure out how to finance things. Uh, and generally, at least in the city of Newark, we we typically use the um, uh, DFA, the Division of Environmental Financial Assistance, through EPA, and get loans through that are administered then through the Ohio Water Development Authority. This is the state revolving loan fund money. Uh, we we use that not exclusively, but but quite a bit on our water and wastewater or our wastewater side of things. Um, when you're doing separation of sewers, you can use some of that money for stormwater as well. Um, and we had a stormwater utility, so we could we could do that. Uh, and so that makes that makes a huge difference as well. On the drinking water side, since this was an integrated project, we were, we were going to do everything right. So we had to we had to get everything financed. And so on the water side, we typically don't use uh, the DFA financing for that uh, because of certain restrictions. But but we do we do generally what we do is we note that, and that's what we did in this case. We we issued some notes, and then uh, we'll be turning those in here uh, here in the next few months into a into an overall revenue bond, and that's how we paid for the uh, the water line improvements. And that, that all then becomes through uh, gets paid through and through uh, rate increases uh, on the water and wastewater side. And that's the support too we got from the administration was to to push this rate increases through uh, to to be able to pay for this kind of stuff. Uh, we also used some of our cash as we went through the project. The project expanded. We had money unappropriate balances that we used, so that was about a million and a half dollars. That there was a small amount of money in CDBG funds, and that money was used mostly for things like picnic tables um, and um, uh, trash cans and bike racks, those kinds of things. That were kind of things that really didn't fit into any of our funding agencies would fund, um, and, and and so so then in the end we end up with okay, how do you pay for this beautification? You know how do we make this we're gonna make this look good? How do we how do we pay for that? There's this funding gap, uh, which was at the time when we started the project that gap was around three three and a half million dollars of cost 
in doing some of this uh, uh, improvements that uh, just the, the general streetscape look of the project couldn't be fun. Obviously, we could just put pipes in the ground, pave the thing back over again, and, we, and we'd be done. Um, uh, but but that's not not the overall goal of the project. So um, so what we did uh, to uh, to um, um, bridge that gap, or what, what what did we take advantage of then to, to be able to fund this project? Uh, well, as I said earlier, we had very large pipes, and that means when you have large pipes and they're deep holes, that means they're going to be wide to get a lot of room. So we basically, uh, and also since we were going to integrate this project, we were replacing water lines. We were also uh, working with a gas company to replace gas lines. Um, and we were replacing uh, service laterals uh, for water and sewer into the properties. So that really means we had to just basically, as, as we said throughout the whole project, blow up the streets. I mean, we, we had to really just, everything was gone. We we, we took out all the sidewalks, took out all the street, took all the parking. I mean, the street was basically gone and, and it was just a big hole in the ground as, as we went through the project section by section. So um, so when we had to do that, we obviously have to pay to put that stuff back. So so the bigger, you know, the bigger the, the cuts had to be, the more we had to put back and we could use some of the utility funding money for that because we couldn't put it in without replacing the streets and replacing some of the sidewalks and and with the um, the amount of laterals and the depth of the laterals and the depth of the service lines, we basically all the, the sidewalk had to be removed to get all that work done. So, um, and we couldn't reuse any of the existing pipes. As I said earlier, the age of the system, the, the pipes were falling apart, we had collapses. And so uh, there was no reuse of anything that was left there. On the water side, there was a dual water main system downtown. At one point in time, there was a small water main. I shouldn't say small. There was, I think, it was an eight-inch line all the way around the square. At some point in time, back in the 30s or 40s, they put in a 16-inch main instead of replacing the pipe with a larger one. They just added a pipe, so we had two, so two pipes that went around downtown. And so some places were hooked to one pipe, some to the other. It was very hard when we had it had issues down there. We had to figure out who was hooked to where, that kind of stuff. So basically, what we did was. Uh, we modeled the system. We said, "Hey, let's just rip that all out, put a new system in," and that's what, that's what we ended up doing. Um, so, new water lines, new sewer lines, and then the gas company came in, and while well, everything was dug up and just re and replaced the gas lines as well, we took advantage of that when we when we were putting it back. That that's how we paid for a lot of the pavement and the sidewalks as they went back in. So, <clears throat> but we still had then. To deal with the streetscape, how do we, you know, add the plantings and things and that kind of things in there? We really didn't have uh, funding for that, but we did have a concept of what we wanted it to look like. So, um, you know, we, uh, uh, as I said earlier, we were uh, Arcadis is our firm that did the um, the, the uh, infrastructure work for us. They partnered with OHM, who helped us in the planning, and they did some of this, and they did the streetscaping uh, look. And here was. This is kind of what the uh, what was envisioned to begin with, um, and you can see a lot of green uh, around on the streets uh, and and the roundabouts and that kind of stuff. But but really we were, um, you know, basically say okay, well how, well how do we how do we, where do we come up with this three to four million dollars to pay for all this work that needs to get done? Uh, the general fund didn't have the money uh, just to just to pay for it, and 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 so what do we do to make this happen? So. We find the, you know, we go out look for, looking for what we can do, and and basically settled on um, green infrastructure. Um, let's make this whole system a passive stormwater system, and that meets our goal of, of clean rivers. That meets our uh, goal of a better quality of life with a better looking system. That meets our goal of a, we have a place to get money for this, uh, and we have a stormwater utility that's viable that we can then. Uh, pay for this system because it is a treatment system. Um, this this loan is administered through or is marketed through a Ohio Department of Development. And part of the deal with this loan is you have to show that uh, you know there is an economic development component to this, and and that's what we did in our loan applications. And 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 we really feel that's true. That's what we were trying to do. Uh, but it's also a green infrastructure. We would pay for green infrastructures, and we when we Green infrastructure, the biggest part of the green infrastructure we had were bioswales. Uh, those are basically treatment systems for the runoff, the stormwater runoff. Uh, and it, so they provided this this loan, a low interest loan. It's one percent, it's a low one percent interest loan uh, for this for this work. And we developed this passive 
water treatment or stormwater treatment system, which again, which I said fits into our our goal um, of, of having um, clean water, basically. And so, um, and re and really, the key here then being that we have this viable stormwater utility, which we have a source to pay for this then, and also we have a long-term control plan underway. I mean, it's something EPA is mandating we do, that we separate these sewers. Well, if we put a treatment system and get the stormwater out of the system, and then that, that reduces the, the, the cost of the water that goes to the wastewater plant, uh, we're treating it right there on site, and discharging it to the river, and it looks good. And so that was kind of, kind of really uh, uh, met all of our goals. And so at this point in time, you know, the project kind of swings back and says, really, the way you can look at it, this really, this is really becomes more of a redevelopment project uh, for economic development. And we're using this green infrastructure for that purpose. Um, of course, the big benefit then it reduces the impact on the river, provides this green space and, and still looks nice. Um, and on the utility side, we sit there and say, well, yeah, then, then what we end up with is we end up with our sewers separated. We've got these, you know, upgrade of our utilities. Um, we, we put in um, a, a fiberglass pipe in the system for sewers, uh, you know, with a long uh, um, lifespan to it. Uh, you know, our anticipation is the pipe we took out of the ground was there over 100 years. We're hoping what we put back in is going to be there over 100 years. We can duct iron water pipe. Uh, Hobos uh, fiberglass uh, sewer pipe uh, and then some plastic storm lines that are in there. So, um, you know, hopefully that's, that's you know, it's going to be 100 years before somebody digs that up again. That was kind of on the utility side, our um, side of things. And then we have this sustainable stormwater treatment system um, that's going to reduce the impact on the river and look great and be an attraction for the downtown. So kind of kind of met all of our goals with with this system we were going to going to put in. Um, met, met the strategy that, that the downtown revitalization project was looking for, this reduce uh, the impact and, re and improve the water quality. So, so um, got the loan, got the work. I, I, I just have to say, too, that here in working with partnership with, with uh, all the people downtown really made the whole thing work. You know, you say, how, how do you make something like that? I go, well, we had a lot of people that were really champions of the, of the project. I mean, there was a lot of people interested in this happening. Uh, you know, they had established the Community Investment Corporation, That's uh, and they con were concentrating on some of this downtown stuff. The city administration um, was, was very much a champion of the project, so getting rates passed, getting uh, uh, um, the general public buy into this thing. Uh, the Newark Downtown Association, which is a group of downtown businesses, of course, they, they were vital to us uh, trying to keep this thing going. And a couple of charitable foundations, uh, and, and I should mention there were a number of projects that were going on as we were doing this, um, the Canal Market District was being built at the same time, uh, and, and that was, you know, so between the Licking County Foundation and the Evans Foundation, which are two charitable organizations, they were working on uh, several projects. Again, like I said, the Canal Market and also the Louis Sullivan Building. The Louis Sullivan Building is a uh, um, Louis Sullivan was a protege of Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, known as the father of the skyscraper. He built these jewel box banks around the country. There's like ten or twelve of them, and they're um, architects go crazy over these things, but we have one in downtown, and so um, uh, and then they were working to fix that up. And part of our project was to help with that, uh, some of that work as we put sidewalks in front of it and that kind of stuff. So a lot of cooperation. And at the same time, Licking County was re the, the county was redoing the courthouse. Um, probably at this point too, I'd also like to say that you know uh, we we ended up with a contractor, the George Igo Company, that that really worked out well for us. Their employees were just fabulous working with the. Uh, businesses uh, and and they they became, they became involved in a lot of the local city activities you know we had an example on Halloween night they had a, you know their employees would show up and pass out candy with the, the trick or treat on the square thing uh, they would come to events that were happening uh, you know uh, the summer the food truck events and things like that they would show up in mass with their employees and stuff didn't really have to but they they, they became part of the community really so and they were very good uh, you know they they uh, there are a lot of good contractors out there, but I think we got one that really helped us out on this project there. And and then the combination of Arcadis and OHM really did a nice job as well with uh, uh, planning things and, and making the project work. So uh, kind of a you know a really good partnership of everything that went on. Um, and this whole time as we're doing all this, there's a number of businesses that also um, 
became involved as well. Um, um, as we expand the project over to Church Street, there was a, a music venue that was going in, the, the 31 West. Uh, uh, there's a place called the New Work that went in. It's a, a, a shared business space one that was being built at the same time. Um, and the Works, which is just off the square, which is a museum uh, co-site type thing, uh, was doing some improvements as well. Uh, Park National Bank, a big bank here in town, is, is now working on a couple buildings, but they were doing some improvement down there as well. And so a lot of things going on at the same time we were trying to build this major infrastructure project. Um, and, and so the partnerships were, were extremely important. Um, I will say, as a utility guy, we, we're, we're usually pretty proud of doing our projects with you know, and coming in under budget kind of thing and, and, and doing things as we, uh, uh, at, at the cost we think it's going to be. A lot of change orders on this project. And, and, and that was because trying to assist businesses trying to do things people you know, were going to do business-wise. We expanded some water lines in certain places, added some little sidewalks here and there, did a lot of things that we probably would not have done normally on most projects um, just because of the cost. Uh, uh, I, I can honestly say as one, one of the more, most uh, – now, we did have a couple of large um, – change orders that occurred during the project, but we kind of knew those were coming because there was a, some work going on at the bridge uh, north of town, and we kind of had to link this project, the separation of this downtown, to that separation area up by the bridge, and and, and because of the timing, we, we just kind of said, well, let's just not, let's get this design downtown. We'll do the, the link to that later as a change order, and so that was a couple million dollar change order that came up uh, off of what the original size of the project was. So, um, and then, so this next slide will just show you the um, uh, kind of, this was the in, initial overall site that we were kind of working with. Um, that was obviously, I'll, now, well, not obviously I'll, I'll show you here in another slide how it was expanded. Um, and, and then you kind of see how some of the green infrastructure fit in as a, as a plan design there. So, um, and again, the project then ex expanded fr from here. So, this is just a sh uh, slide to show you uh, kind of all the elements we put in for green infrastructure and how many how many uh, different things that are um, uh, downtown uh, that that are green infrastructure. So, um, and, and this is uh, just where the biosphere's are at, where our um, runoff uh, tree, shade tree areas are at, that kind of stuff, and where we've used recoming back. I should mention that too. Some of the brick out of the street we put back into the middle of the uh, roundabouts. And so what's in there, what's in the roundabouts, are actually brick from the street. So we re reutilized uh, some material as well. There's also an area um, where we uh, used some of the rails uh, that were left over from the project uh, and kind of put a little sign over here. Here's what the um, interurban rail that went around. And this is back in the 1920s, 1910s, maybe. There was a rail system from Newark to Zanesville to Columbus kind of thing. And and, uh, and so we, we took some of those rails we dug out and put them into one of the uh, uh, roundabout areas. So kind of interesting. So, so kind of the uh, key to this whole thing are these, these uh, bioswales. Um, and this is kind of what they look like before the things started to grow in. This is after they were done. You, you can see that, or you maybe you can't see, but uh, water flows into them through two channels. Um, and, and and we planted uh, um, vegetation in there that was that was uh, designed to um, be hardy that can thrive in a downtown environment. Uh, it's, it's kind of a rough environment for trees and plants to grow in a downtown. Uh, not the, not the perfect place to plant plants, but we do. But this this was the bioswale. Uh, so how those are built, um, and and this is the original plans. This changed slightly uh, as we went, went through there. But a bioswale uh, basically we have. Uh, on top, there's some mulch, um, and then there's an engineered soil. We get a certain soil mixture we put in there uh, for filtration, uh, so that you know it's got the right mix of clay and sand, that kind of stuff, so we can drain water through there at a fairly good rate. There's a filter fabric then that sits over top of some gravel for the, the remaining. Now, originally, these things were going to be designed so that the water just went into the ground and dispersed, and the ground did not connect back into the uh, uh, stormwater system. That didn't seem like it was going to work very well for us, and so in the end, we tied this. So after the water goes through there, we tied it back into the stormwater system. So we still get the treatment, uh, but it goes right back into the stormwater system, which then goes directly to, to the river. Um, 
so it's really not a closed system anymore. It, it's a uh, um, um, discharged right back into the system we're catching, but we are treating it, and which is which is what the goal was of the, of the project. So, um, and so the question a lot of people ask is, hey, what'd you plant in there? Uh, mostly in the downtown area, we have what's uh, we have a European hornbeams, we have some elms, and we have some little leaf lindens planted in there, and then the uh, the uh, shrub was a low growth sumac that was put in in there. Um, and then in the uh, drainage areas, generally there's um, um, boxwood, a lot of boxwood, some creeping lyrope, and uh, some kitten grass. Uh, maiden kitten grass is what goes into the uh, um, corner um, drainage areas of the of the downtown. So. And I'll discuss the maintenance of those of this whole system here shortly, but uh, just wanted to mention as well. As we went through this project, and again, I talked about partnerships and stuff uh, that, that we had uh, with, with the CIC and, and, and other groups, we, we set up a website, uh, wedignewark.com, and we on there we would put parking maps so people could go there, uh, see where they could park. Uh, we had construction update videos. Hey, here's what's going on with this video with uh, signage for a downtown business, how to get to certain businesses, and we developed an email list. Sign up for this here. We'll send you emails as to what's going on. Uh, throughout the project, and then any announcements we had for events. And then as we went through this whole pro project, uh, we kind of did it in segments. There was, I think we ended up with 12 segments as we went through here. Uh, but at the end of every segment, um, we would hold a reception at at, at, an, at a venue close to where that where we were having doing the construction work and kind of update people as to what happened during this, that segment and what's going on next. And we would invite all the business owners in the downtown to come to these things. Um, uh, take some contributions, try to get, uh, not from them, but from other people to try and uh, you know, have some refreshments and stuff and get people into the businesses and and then just uh, ha let them, hey, here's what, listen to their complaints and, and, and comments and, and try to put that into the overall planning of the of the project. So um, nice little thing we did. I, I, I uh, really think that was a, a great uh, addition to what, what we, what we uh, had done. So all right, so the cost of this project. Um, now here, here's the, here's the numbers, um, and this didn't include the engineering cost as well. So we were we were over the thirty million dollar mark, and we got engineering into that. Uh, but this is mostly being paid for by uh, water, wastewater, stormwater utility. There's about a half million dollars in uh, general fund money that's being borrowed on uh, part of the project that we really didn't have water and sewer lines on, and part of the area that we added on to. We kind of went from the area we were in to the, to the next street to the north, which in our town is Church Street. We did the Church Street addition, and uh, we didn't have a lot of sewer and water lines in certain areas of that, but we wanted to do some of the electric upgrades and things like that, and that's what that money was used for. Uh, but but this is the, uh, the, the kind of the, the final numbers uh, uh, to get the get the whole area done. Now, this does not include what the cost on our bridge costs either. At the same time, as we were doing this project, ODOT was rebuilding the main bridge into town, and as they were doing that, we also separated sewers and installed some new water lines in that area as well. And then we had to take that block in between. It was, it was really a block away is where that was. We took that block and added that as a change order on the downtown project to connect those, so so that the, water, the separated water and sewer lines from the bridge area are now connected into the downtown. And so then eventually we can then connect that down to our main interceptors along the river, which is a couple miles away. But uh, that'll be a, a project in the future. But we did that as, as this project went on. And, and the real one of the big advantages to that was that same contractor, Eigel, um, got that bridge work as well. And so it just kind of flowed together. Uh, so, so really a lot of things in this project really kind of came out uh, beneficial for us and made it, made it a kind of a smooth project. Um, um, but again, a lot of major change orders. So, um, so what you know, what what did we end up with on the green infrastructure? These are the numbers. Uh, probably don't mean a lot, but you can the, the one number that really kind of stands out that we uh, have to deal with, or or, or so this is a treatment system. Uh, we have 182 planter pots out there, which are have to be planted with flowers every year, and and. Uh, uh, and, and so that's, that's a real maintenance issue. Uh, and then maintaining the bioswales is also, so it's a lot of square footage of uh, vegetation that needs to be maintained. Um, so 
you know, how, how do we do that? That's, that's the thing. So we so for the first few years, we kind of, you know, like in, this is a learning process for all of us. And, and we, we worked in conjunction with the uh, soil and water district here in Licking County. And uh, they assisted us in, in uh, some of this. Uh, we, uh, we paid them for that, uh, but for providing some people to um, um, water the plants, to um, maintain the plants, to keep things trimmed and keep weeds mowed. Uh, weeds, weeds and uh, watering were the, were the big deal the first few years. We've kind of come to the conclusion that we're going to, and, and we have come to the conclusion we have, and now we're going to here starting next week have, an, have a full-time employee um, working in this area, maintaining uh, not only this area, but a greater area of the downtown, kind of um, keeping things mowed, keeping things planted, keeping the system operating. It, it is a, I, I try to explain this to everybody that comes in, is it is a treatment system. Um, you know, uh, and, and so we have to maintain it. We can't just let that you know, not work. And so um, this person is going to spend time uh, keeping the, the biosphere is cleaned out and, and, and weeded and properly maintained, keeping weeds down and then making the whole place look, look good uh, and then keeping the flowers looking good and that kind of stuff just because that's, that's part of this overall economic development, right? Is to, so it looks good. If, if we just let the thing grow up in weeds, that would be uh, not a good thing. Part of the thing that that employee will do too, that was kind of an add-on to this whole thing we didn't really think a whole lot about, but since it's a treatment system, you know, we, we, didn't, want, we didn't want people, the businesses to go out and like, in the wintertime, throw a bunch of salt down, and then all the water, the salt and water would run into the biosoils, kill all the plants. Um, and so we, we're doing the, uh, we do street sweeping. We have a, a street sweeping machine, a sidewalk sweeping machine, I should say, to keep the sidewalks clear in the wintertime uh, during snow events. Uh, we also use, we put down beet juice, and we put down a beet juice material uh, for de-icing. You know, we, we got to keep reminding ourselves that it's not, we're not putting down salt, we're putting down de-icing material. Uh, and, and again, that that again goes to higher water quality uh, because we're not putting all that salt into the river, all those dissolved solids. Um, and um, and hopefully it's an environmentally friendly system that we come up with. So uh, also then in the summertime, especially on what we do is on market days, which is Tuesdays and Fridays when the canal market is open, we sweep the streets. We have a, we have a, it's not the streets again, the sidewalks. We have a sidewalk sweeper. Guy gets up and drives around and cleans up all the trash that gets thrown on the, uh, um, on the sidewalk. Number one problem in our downtown area is cigarette butts. And I mean, I mean, yeah, boy, if I could find a way to use cigarette butts, I'd be a millionaire. But uh, uh, we have a collection of, uh, we have collection pots for uh, cigarette butts uh, in a number of places. We keep adding them to try and reduce that because it just, it, we collect so many of them. Um, but uh, so, so maintenance of it, it's an important system. You know, we, you think, well, we built this thing, how, you know, okay, we're done. Uh, we go. We, well, we can't go. We got to stay around. We got to keep the thing running. And, and that's, that's critical to the, to the overall operation. Um, so I said earlier that we did uh, expand the project, and this is this is kind of the leg we added on. Uh, we also um, on that leg that with this labeled number twelve, we, we we extended out the road on either side of that, which is Church Street. So we've done that, and then there was a little kind of at the at the north east corner of the project. Uh, there's a hotel over there, uh, a small section of area that was not separated. We went ahead and separated that. So. So really, those whole what would look like three, three or four, five blocks in there has been done as part of this project. So the project started at a certain size. We expanded it, expanded to the bridge area. So it was um, quite a uh, kind of almost doubled the size of the project by the time we got got done uh, doing the whole thing. And 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 every time we added a segment. So if you look at that boxed-in area that's there. Uh, that's labeled 12. We, we, we figured about every section was about two and a half million dollars uh, that was that we did. So um, just kind of a, a general cost. We always kind of thought, well, if something happened, that's what. Uh, if we got to do another street, it's two and a half million dollars. So, um, uh, so, so in the end, here here we are. Uh, this is what things look like today. This is North Park Place, uh, Midland Theater there on the right. Uh, um, you can kind of see, I mean, as we got done, I mean, we kind of look at that, uh, especially like the entrance to the, the Midland Theater. Boy, it really that makes a nice entrance to the Midland Theater. Some things that we did there, uh, just 
you know, the sidewalk on the on on the uh, west side of the or sorry, the east side of the Midland Theater there was in bad shape. We kind of extended that down there and fixed some things up for them as we went by there, and then did a little bit more work in that area just to make that whole area look good. You can see all the bioswales uh, in front of the businesses there with the trees in them, and, and they've greened up and are looking pretty good. Um, we do allow you see the, the flowers out front there. Those are the potted flower plants. The first year we 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 had petunias in there, and boy, that was a who had a lot of work. And uh, and so we do allow some of the businesses to plant their own flowers if they want a certain type of flower in there. That's not a problem. We let them do that. Uh, but but if they plant something that needs a lot of water, a lot of maintenance, we kind of expect them to, to do that. Uh, we will do some of that, but we, they got to do most of it. So, um, but there's 182 of those, so you can imagine 182 pots that look like that. That's that's a lot of work. And then uh, uh, we did have an issue earlier after the second year with with the uh, grasses dying off, and we really never really determined what caused that in those in the um, um, drainage there. If you look to the to the left side of that photo in the le lower left corner, there's a drainage area that's a, basically a bioswale had had uh, grasses in it, had maiden grass, kitten maiden grass all died. Uh, we we think it had to do with some pH issues. It didn't. There was no not high salt issues in, in the soil, but uh, some pH issues. So hopefully we, we, we plant some new plants in there, some different plants, and hopefully they're going to be hardy and, and survive. So uh, so this is North Park Place. Uh, this is an overall view of the square, kind of a cool picture with a, a drone photo. Um, compliments of OHM did this for us. Uh, you can see the four roundabouts and the two-way two -way traffic. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, we started saying, oh, there may be accidents here and accidents there. And, you know, I, I you know, knock on wood, I've not heard of any accidents. But uh, we had people go the wrong way and do all kinds of things. But I think people have finally figured the whole thing out. And and really, I, I walk around downtown a lot. And, and I'll tell you, there's a, a lot of, um, um, uh, it's really a lot a lot easier to walk around just, just to get around. And you can also see in the center is the courthouse. I, they they re did as well and put a nice new sidewalk around it as well. So it's really nice to to, to really walk around. So the events downtown really, really are, are nice, uh, you know, accessibility, that kind of stuff really, really is nice. So, um, and then this is a picture of the courthouse uh, that was remodeled. And, and just to kind of give you an idea, as we were doing all those streets around there, they were working on the courthouse, and a major rehab of the courthouse. So you can imagine a lot of work in that little bit of area there. and. And you know there were a lot of complaints, but uh, uh, but but like I said, we had we had some good contractors. We had a good contract. We felt that really worked hard to to uh, help people out, do do what needed to be doing, keep sidewalks open for businesses, that that kind of thing. Um, and, and so um, that really helped the project. Was, was it was it perfect? Was everybody happy? No, uh, but I think in the end we got we got a good product, and and they were really uh, um, it really helped us. So. And then I threw this up here, the Canal Market District. It's kind of interesting that this this Canal Market runs between Second and Third Street. We did both both of those streets and, and really worked hard. The contractor worked hard, changed some schedules around so that when they opened up the Canal Market, we had both of our segments done on either end of that, so that uh, you know people when they showed up, both ends were done. It was kind of a completed project, at least at that end of the project. We still had our whole rest of the downtown to get done, but when Canal Market opened up. We had our two streets done and all tied together, so it all looked pretty good. And so uh, that cooperation was really, really good as well. So with that, I believe uh, here is my contact information. I also put Fred Ernest up there, who is uh, the community uh, CIC group that was involved as well. And I think he's active with the Heritage Ohio group, so he'd be somebody you could contact as well. Yeah, we welcome anybody to come and take a look, uh, walk around, uh, um, and, and we'd be more than willing to discuss it with that. So I guess I would take any questions you have or? Yep, you heard them. So uh, if you have any questions, please type them into the question box at this time. And we'll give everybody just a moment to, to get those in. Okay. Oh, that's not a question. Um, <laughs> I thought I had a question, but it was just a comment. Uh, John says, that was a great presentation. Thank you. 
<laughs> well, it looks like we don't have any questions. It seems you give a very thorough explanation. So no one has any questions. Um, well, if that's the case, then I will wrap this up. I'd like to thank everybody for attending today's yes, webinar. Oh, there is one question. Um, so again, John says, I would like to discuss this with my service safety director. Can he call you? So are you, would you accept calls from other safety, uh, from other cities about this? Sure. Yeah, my phone number's there on the screen. So just give me a call so, or give Fred a call, either one. So there you go, John. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that, it looks like we are out of questions. So. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for attending today's webinar. Uh, for our calendar of upcoming events, including future webinars, please visit us at heritageohio.org. Our next webinar will be February 6th. Uh, Voorhees Law Forum will be presenting on attracting Opportunity Zone investment funds to your community. Uh, and with that, everyone have a nice day, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>